Hey everyone, Jared back again. Now, just before we dive in, I did want to mention that out of the box, the Mi 4 comes with Mi UI version 5, but since Mi UI version 6 is said to be released sometime in October and an almost finished version of Mi UI version 6 is available, I figured I'd load and run it and base my review around that. But first, let's start off with the look and design. Now, I think what pops into everyone's mind when they first see the Mi 4 is that it looks an awful lot like the iPhone, and it's true. Xiaomi does take a lot of design cues from Apple in both hardware and UI. The Mi 4 features a stainless steel frame with mirror finish chamfered edges that wraps around the magnesium alloy chassis, which gives it a nice heavy and quality build feel to it. Though the back is still glossy plastic and shows fingerprints very easily. SIM card tray on the left and power as well as volume rocker on the right. Again, though, all metal. Uh, the micro USB port and speaker are located at the bottom. Now the speaker looks cool with its machine drilled holes, but at the same time screams iPhone. And actually while we're on the topic, it actually doesn't sound too bad for a single output speaker. Um, I was actually satisfied, which may not say a lot to you, but to me it speaks volumes for Chinese phones. No pun intended. Physically speaking, the top is where I was most pleased because the Mi 4 is the first Chinese phone I've personally gotten in with an IR blaster, which is something that's rare and actually a big deal to me. But something that isn't rare for Chinese phones is the capacitive buttons, which have a super dim backlight. At least the notification light underneath the home button is a bit brighter. So Xiaomi's goal with MIUI version 6, which by the way is based on Android 4.4.4 KitKat, uh, was for it to be, and I quote, visually stunning and stunningly simple. Well, if that's what they were going for, I think that they've achieved that goal. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because they heavily take design cues from Apple's iOS, while still maintaining the level of user control that Android provides. Everything from the lock screen, which has nothing but your notification count, the ability to swipe to the left for the camera, and a simple swipe up to unlock, the home screen, which is similar to Apple's iOS and lack of app drawer, to its blurred backgrounds found in the notification pull down, quick toggles panel, and folders, it's beautifully and functionally simplistic. And if you hate the launcher, which I'm not all that fond of either, uh, well, again, it's Android. So just download one of the many super popular third-party launchers from the Play Store and be done with it. Even jumping into the settings menu, you can see the functional simplicity of it all. Uh, we have almost everything we need that's normally found in major brand phones like LG, Samsung, HTC, and so on but no crazy, as I call them, Harry Potter features. No wave your hand to do this, or tilt your phone and your head and snap your fingers just to do something I can already do in one second with my thumb. But again, like major brand phones, we can do things like tweak the color and feel of the display, assign navigation button actions, uh, customize our headphones listening experience, and so on. But I think because of its overall simplicity is why it performs so well, and it really does. Um, I really haven't noticed any lag or delays in any tasks outside of an app's potential poor coding and development. Now, the Mi 4 is running the Adreno 330 GPU, Snapdragon 801, with a clock speed of 2.5 gigahertz and three gigs of RAM, which with my Mi 4 loaded up with apps, sits at about 1.3 to 1.4 gigabytes free after clearing out all the tasks. Now, MIUI has two different performance modes which can be accessed in the battery settings. By default, it's set to balanced, but you can switch it to performance if you want to, just be aware that you'll chew up battery quick in performance mode. So I decided to benchmark it with Antutu in balanced mode first, which achieved a bit of a disappointing score of 31,659, which put it below even its older brother, the Mi 3. Now, after running the test again, this time in performance mode, it was able to achieve a score of 42,317, which puts it just below the Samsung Galaxy S5. So even though it doesn't blow me away in benchmarks, it's phones like this that may benchmark lower than other major brand phones, but have a much better real world performance. Now, with regards to the display, uh, it has a five inch 1080p IPS LCD panel uh, with a PPI of 441, which is nothing to complain about. Um, and using a useful app I found appropriately called Display Tester, we're able to see that the viewing angles are okay, not great, but better than many currently out there. Uh, it has no real color banding except for when colors start to get a bit dark. Uh, it's black contrast is great. You can see pretty much every step, but as you can see, it does suffer a bit with white contrast, primarily with red, yellow, green, and blue colors. Now, both the black and white saturation could certainly use some work, but does provide some really deep blacks. Uh, at the same time, color saturation seems to be pretty acceptable. Now, the gamma seems to be pretty good too, although again, 
could be a little bit better. So overall, it's a good display. Uh, colors are fairly accurate and text is crispy and the display brightness is really good. It looks awesome and very viewable outdoors. Now the cameras featured in the Mi 4 are both from Sony. Uh, the front is an impressive 8 megapixel for taking high quality selfies and the rear is the 13 megapixel IMX214. Uh, I actually found both cameras to be fairly color accurate, but I do wish the camera app had a white balance selection option. And that's actually one of the few things I dislike about this phone, or more specifically, MIUI version 6. In MIUI version 5, the camera app had more manual controls than I've ever seen on any smartphone I've used, hands down. But with version 6, the camera app has been heavily simplified. In fact, I read somewhere that that's Xiaomi and MIUI's attempt to stay true to their new motto from MIUI version 6. Uh, we still get some of those manual controls, but unlike MIUI version 5's camera app that had a UI overlay with all those options, in version 6, they're hidden in a separate settings menu. Now swiping to the right brings up different modes, some of which we're all familiar with, uh, even the skin tone option, which is pretty much the same thing as Samsung's Beautify mode. But MIUI's skin tone option actually does a really good job at smoothing skin and making you look younger, and the photo doesn't look overly processed either, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, and of course, video recording is a thing, and yes, the Mi 4 can record in up to 4K. Uh, so all in all, a decent camera, but nothing too special, and the photos it produces don't really give me that wow factor, like on the Galaxy S5, uh, LG G3, and Oppo Find 7, till it's just a few of the phones that have actually wowed me. And so I guess the only thing left to talk about is the battery life. Uh, well, the Mi 4 packs a 3080 milliamp hour non-removable battery, uh, and during my testing I played audio and video files as well as browse the web all consistently until the battery reached about 15%. Though of course I forgot to take a screenshot when I was done testing, but as long as you guys trust my word, I can say that I managed to squeeze about four and a half hours of screen on time, which if you ask me is about on par with the 3080 milliamp hour battery capacity. Uh, so I think the Xiaomi Mi 4 is a great phone for the money. It feels really solid on the hand due to the awesome build quality. Uh, the software is pretty and functionally simplistic, just how I like it, and because it's Android, you can ditch the stock launcher. The cameras are both more than adequate, and the overall real-world performance is fast and smooth, and of course, the battery life is perfectly satisfactory in my opinion. It's, it's just a great all-around phone, guys. Anyways, I'll post a link in the description below for pricing and availability, and if you wanted to pick one up for yourself, I'll have a $25 off coupon code posted in the description as well that pandawill.com gave to me to provide to you guys. So thanks to pandawill.com for sending me the phone to review as well as providing the $25 coupon code for you guys. Uh, anyways, I hope you liked this video and if you did, show me some love and tap that like button down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more of my videos in the future. Thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers. This video is sponsored by unlockthatphone.com. Unlock any phone, any carrier worldwide. Visit unlockthatphone.com for more information.